For this function, f of x equals 1 half x plus 2, it is 1 to 1. And what that means is that if the y's are different, the x's will be different as well. Or I guess the opposite of that, if the x's are different, the y's will be different. Then what we want to do is find the inverse of our function f. We want to state the domain and range of f and state the domain and range of f inverse. So let's start by finding the inverse. When we're looking for the inverse, I'm going to start with my function f of x equals 1, 1 half x plus 2. And I'm going to change that f of x to y, just to make the equation a little simpler to write, and there are fewer symbols there. Now, with inverse functions, the x and y values get switched. So in the equation, I'm going to switch the x and y values. And then I'm going to solve for this y, and that will give me the equation of my inverse function. So I'm going to subtract 2 to get x minus 2 equals 1 half y. And multiplying by 1 half, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal 2 over 1. So I multiply by 2 over 1 on the right and multiply by 2 over 1 on the left. So on the right, all of those fractions cancel, leaving me with y. And on the left, I'm going to treat that 2 over 1 as 2 and use a distributive property. That will give me 2x minus 4. So I now have my inverse function, which I'm going to label as f inverse. And it is 2x minus 4. So now that I've found the inverse function, I want to state the domain and range of f. My function f is 1 half x plus 2. This is a linear function. And a linear function is a type of polynomial function. And polynomial functions have a domain of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Then for my inverse, I have the equation 2x minus 4. And this is also a linear equation, linear function, which is a type of polynomial. So its domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. With inverse functions, as we saw here, the x and the y value get switched. The domain are the x's, the range are the y's. And so when the domain and range get switched, or sorry, the x and the y get switched, the domain and the range get switched. So I can use the domain of the inverse function to find the range of the original function. So our function f has a range of all real numbers. We can do the same thing with the inverse. So we have the range of the inverse also being all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Write an equation for the inverse function and then state the domain and range of f and f inverse. In this question, we have the function f of x equals x cubed plus 4. The first thing I want to do is find the inverse function, which we call f inverse. So to find that inverse function, I'm going to change f of x to y. And then I'll switch the x and the y. And I'm switching the x and the y because that is um, what inverse functions mean. The x and the y are switched in these type of equations. 
So that's basically by definition, because we're looking for an inverse function. And then I'm going to solve for y in this new equation. So I want to isolate the y. So to isolate the y, I'll subtract 4 on both sides. And I need to get rid of that cube, and the opposite of cubing is cube rooting. So I'm going to cube root the left and cube root the right. The cube root and the cube cancel each other out, giving me y. And then on the left, I have my inverse function, cube root of x minus 4. So we can label that as f inverse. f inverse is the cube root of x minus 4. The next thing that we want to do is find the domain and range of f and f inverse. Now we have some strategies for finding the domain of different types of functions. So I'm going to find the domain of each of these f and f inverse first. So if I look at f of x, that is x cubed plus 4. This type of function is called a polynomial function. And with polynomial functions, there are no restrictions on the domain, meaning that no matter what real number we substitute in, we are going to have a defined y value. And so because of that, we can say that the domain of f is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. We'll do the same thing for f inverse. We just found that f inverse is the cube root of x minus 4. As I look at this function, I would categorize this as a root function. We call it a root function because of the radical. Now, with root functions, you want to pay attention to the index. This has an index of 3. And the reason why you want to pay attention to the index is because root functions with an even index have restrictions on the domain, but root functions with an odd index have no restrictions. So we have an index that is odd, so there will be no restrictions on the domain of this function. The domain of f inverse is also all real numbers are negative infinity to infinity. Now we also want to find the range of f and f inverse. Now we don't have as many strategies for finding the range like we did the domain. But if you'll remember what we did earlier is we switched the x and the y. So what we know about inverses is that the x and the y switch, domain are the x's, range are the y's. So if we switch the x and the y, the domain and range also get switched. So what that means is that I can use the domain of f inverse as the range of f. And I can use the domain of f as the range of f inverse. So we now know that the range of f is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, and the range of f inverse is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. In this example, we're going to be given a quadratic function in vertex form. Sometimes it's called standard form. And we want to find the following. We want to find the vertex, the orientation, axis of symmetry, intercepts, and then graph this quadratic function. Now the vertex form, let me write that down for you. The vertex form of a quadratic is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. 
And the ordered pair HK is the vertex of the quadratic, vertex of the parabola. So our function is written in that vertex form. So after the minus sign, we can see that we have a 4. That's going to be our x-coordinate of the vertex. And then right here we have negative 4. That's the k. And that's the y-coordinate of our vertex. So we have a vertex that is 4, negative 4. The next thing we want to do is find the orientation. And the orientation of a quadratic function is either up or down. The value of a will determine whether that quadratic is up or down. Whenever a is greater than 0, the graph opens up. And whenever a is less than 0, it opens down. In this example, the value of a is 1. We don't see a coefficient in front of the parentheses, so we assume the value to be 1. So a is equal to 1, which is positive or greater than 0. So this parabola opens up. And we want to find the axis of symmetry. When you have the graph of a quadratic, it's a parabola. And if you draw a vertical line that passes through the vertex, you're going to see that the graph is a mirror image around that vertex. So we call that line the axis of symmetry, that vertical line. So it's a vertical line that passes through the vertex. So for this example, we're going to use the x-coordinate of the vertex. And the vertical line, x equals 4, is the axis of symmetry. Next, we want to find the intercepts. I'm going to start by finding the y-intercept. You can find a y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So that's calculating f of 0. That would be 0 minus 4 squared minus 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4, and negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. So we have a y-intercept at the point 0, 12. And I'm going to find the x-intercept. An x-intercept can be found by letting y equal 0. Our equation is in function notation, so rather than having a y in the equation, we have f of x. So we're going to set f of x equals 0. When I do that, I have the equation 0 equals x minus 4 squared minus 4. And I'm going to solve this equation using the square root method. I'm going to isolate this square and everything that that square is attached to. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to isolate that square. Once I isolate the square, I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of the square. The square root and the square are opposite operations and they cancel each other out. But whenever I square root a square, I gain this plus or minus symbol on the other side of the equation. And square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And that gives me x equals 4 plus and minus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 minus 2 is 2. So we have x-intercepts at the ordered pair 6, 0, and 2, 0. Now that I have the intercepts, I'm going to graph this quadratic function. I'm going to use the information that I've gathered. I've got the vertex being 4, negative 1, excuse me, 4, negative 4. I have a y-intercept at 0, 12. I have two x-intercepts 
at 6, 0, and 2, 0. So 4, negative 4, my vertex. I have a y-intercept at 0, 12, an x-intercept at 6, 0, and a y-intercept at 2, 0. When I draw this, I want to keep in mind that these are not random points. The vertex is a very specific point that indicates where the function turns around. We call it a turning point. So this will dip at that vertex and turn around. We also want to keep in mind the symmetry of the parabola. So we should see a mirror image on either side of the vertex. So this gives me the graph of the quadratic equation x minus 4 squared minus 4. So for this question, we are given a quadratic function in vertex form. This is the function here, f of x equals 1 third x minus 3 squared plus 3. And we want to address the following. We want to sketch the graph and find the domain and range. So this quadratic function is in vertex form, or sometimes called standard form. And what that means is that our function follows this particular pattern, a times x minus h squared plus k, where h, k, the ordered pair h, k, is the vertex of the graph of the parabola. So looking at our example, you can see the h and k being 3 and 3. So we have the vertex of the parabola. This provides um, information on how we're going to draw that parabola, where that vertex is. Um, so with a parabola, you either have an up-facing parabola or a down-facing parabola when your quadratic is a function. And the vertex is at these turning points here. So we're going to use the value of a, which in our example is 1 third, to determine which one. Whenever a is greater than 0, we have an up-facing parabola. And when a is less than 0, we have a down-facing parabola. So our a is 1 third, and because that is greater than 0 or positive, we know that our parabola opens up. So we have a pretty good idea of how to sketch the graph at this point. I'm going to draw where the vertex is, 3, 3 will be here and we know it's facing up however we don't know how wide or thin the parabola is going to be and that is also determined by the value of a when a is equal to 1 that is our base function and um, if we think about what that graph looks like we have 0 0 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1. And so you can see that that point is 1 over and 1 up, 1 over and 1 up away from the vertex. But when a is equal to 1 third, that point will be Instead of one away, one up, it'll be a third up. Now, we have some restrictions here because uh, you guys are doing this problem in my math lab. And my math lab restricts you to clicking only on the points where you have a grid point. So because the y is one third, for that point because the transformation moves that point 
to a third, you're not going to be able to click that point to draw the graph. So you have to find a point that is matching the grid that you have. So it has to be a whole number in order to draw the graph using my Math Labs tools. So what you need is a second point on the graph that happens to be using integers. So I would suggest looking for maybe an x-intercept or a y-intercept in this example. A uh, y-intercept works. So if you find the y-intercept, uh, you're going to let x equal 0. And for your function, that's f of 0. And you have 1 third times 0 minus 3 squared plus 3. So we'll follow order of operations inside of the parentheses. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 1 third of 9 is 3. And you have 3 plus 3 is 6. So this gives you a second ordered pair on the graph. 0, 6. And because those are both integers, my math lab will accept that second click. And you can see how wide the parabola is from there. This question also asks to find the domain and range. The domain is the x values, and the domain of every quadratic function is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And the range, we're going to use this vertex. That is the first y value in the range, and all the y values going up from there are included in the range. So our range starts at 3 and goes to infinity. 3 is included because the vertex is included in the graph of the parabola. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.